One of my favorite things about programming is how simple and straightforward it is to get started. Really, you need very, very little to get up and running when you want to start developing. And this is true both for learning how to program as well as actually programming at an enterprise or professional level. You don't need a whole lot. And this is in contrast to, say, maybe network engineering, which is going to require you to get your hands on some network devices that you can, you can work with and play with. There's a much larger initial investment there. For programming, all you're really going to need is something called a compiler. And what is a compiler? Well, a compiler is an important piece of software, and I'm going to talk about it more in another nugget. But what it boils down to is code that a programmer writes, code that you type into the computer, which is called source code, has to be baked into machine language. So it starts off looking something like this. And don't worry about what this does. You don't need to understand that. Just recognize that this has some English words in it that you recognize. There's import. Uh, I know what that means. That says calc circumference. There's circles. So we recognize this English language, this English text. And once you learn how to read or write code, you'll recognize what that code does. But a computer has no idea what that is. A computer needs something entirely different. A computer needs code that looks like this. We call this machine language. And machine language, or assembly code, this is binary code in this case, is totally incomprehensible. Um, pretty much nobody can actually write functional software in binary language. But this is what the computer needs. And so in between these two things, you get a compiler that compiles your code into machine language. It takes this, runs it through a process, and it spits out that so that the code, the instructions that you've written, can be executed by the computer. Now, compilers are easy to get. If you're running on Macintosh OS, all you need to do is find your favorite terminal program, launch it, and you can see that you have Python pre-installed. Type Python dash dash version and it will tell me, oh, I've got Python 2.7.7. If I just type Python and hit Enter, it's going to launch me right into a command line program where I can start typing Python code right away. So I have this built-in advantage. Now, if you're running on Windows, unfortunately, you will not have any compiler available to you, at least not by default, but you can get one easily enough. Just go to the website of the programming language for the software that you would like to perform and download the compiler. Python.org, for example, has a Python compiler that you can download to your Windows machine. Uh, there's a free C++ compiler called GCC, very popular C++ compiler you can get. There's a whole host of them out there. All you need to do is hit your favorite search engine and search for the compiler program for the programming language that you want to write in. So the options are available. They're easy to get, and they are out there for you. And that's all you need. Once you have one of those on your machine, you can start executing writing programs right away. Even easier than doing that, though, is launching something called a fiddle. A fiddle is a relatively new term, and fiddles are websites, totally self-contained websites, that allow you to play around with and type code into your computer and see the output from it right inside of your web browser. I believe the name comes from jsfiddle.net, one of the first fiddle websites out there, and I've got it loaded up right here. But there's a fiddle for every different type of programming language. JSFiddle.net is for JavaScript. You can go to a, uh, here's one, pythonfiddle.com that's going to let you try out Python code. Here's an SQL one, dbfiddle, that's going to let you try out SQL commands against databases. Uh, here's a C++ one. And they're very simple, very easy to use. The C++ one has a little bit of code loaded into the shell up on the top. I click Run. We can see this is a Hello program down at the bottom. It says, what is my name? Uh, my name is Ben. Oh, hello, Ben. Simple, straightforward, and easy. I didn't have to install anything. All of this is built right into the website that I've accessed, in this case, cpp.sh. So again, just use a search engine. Type in the programming language that you would like to learn and look for a fiddle for that particular language, and I guarantee you will find one. They're very popular now. They're very easy to use. They're fast. They're quick, and they get you writing code right away. Now, while a compiler is really the only technology, the only device that you technically need, one thing you'll find super helpful is an application that you can type or write your source code into. And that's going to come either in the form of an IDE or a text editor. An IDE is an integrated development environment. And these are very common applications that developers and programmers use to write their code. Integrated development environments, IDEs like Visual Studio or NetBeans or Eclipse, there are a whole host of IDEs available. Pretty much every programming language out there has some corollary IDE, at least one. Many of them have more than one available to you. IDEs are graphical user interfaces. They give you this very feature-rich, complex, and extensible way to work with a language. So they're not just a place to type your code into, but it includes ways to manage an entire project written in that code. In fact, any real, even modestly sized programming project is probably going to require some sort of file management and library management, some of the tools 
that are built into an IDE. You can't really manage a large scale project without some of those features and without some of those tools. But you know what? Some people prefer something a little bit simpler, and text editors will do the trick there as well. Technically, you don't need anything other than, say, Notepad that comes built into your computer, but you probably want some additional features built into your text editor if you're going to use them for coding. At the very least, you want some syntax highlighting and maybe some, uh, some auto indentation features. There's a lot of great text editors out there that do this as well. They are less feature rich than your IDE. They're usually very fast and very clean. They're very portable. So code or, or projects that you're working on inside of a text editor will usually translate from one computer and from one operating system to another very, very easily. And frequently, they're also extensible as well. You can get a lot of add-ons and a lot of extensions to add just the specific features you need onto those text editors. So with those two things in hand, a compiler or an interpreter and some sort of text editor or IDE, you can sit down and you're ready to get started and learn how to program. That encompasses all the devices and technologies that you're going to need available to you. In terms of computing devices, this can be done on a laptop. It can be done on a desktop computer. There are compilers and IDEs that are now available to run on Android or iPad, iOS. So you can even program on your tablet or your phone if you want to. There's a lot of different options out there, but it's very, very simple and straightforward to get up and running. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.